Let's take a closer look at the Black Series 6 inch Balin Skull action figure from Star Wars Ahsoka. Villa Verikino, living the Star Wars life. Hello there, and thanks for visiting the Villa Verikino YouTube channel. Today I'm going to take a closer look at a new arrival that I'm very excited about. This is Balin Skull from the Black Series line by Hasbro. He is of course from the live action Star Wars Ahsoka series that aired on Disney+. Plus. Now this character was played by the amazing Ray Stevenson who unfortunately passed away so I don't really know where the character is going to go, whether he will appear in any other media, but I absolutely loved the character in the first series so I'm very happy to see that he has been added to the Black Series line for this series. So before I open up the box and take a closer look at the figure I'm just going to take a moment to look at the packaging for this figure. Of course we have now returned to the window boxes for the Black Series line which is just great if you love to keep your Black Series packaged. I think he looks really nice here. We have the sort of teal color for the Star Wars Ahsoka stripe with the character name printed there and of course we have this fantastic side art with his arms crossed. I think that looks really cool there and of course we've got the color coming up from the bottom. We can see his lightsaber hilt hanging there very very cool and on the back we have the same blurb that appears on all of the Ahsoka series uh, black series figures rather than being a sort of a bio blurb about the character it just describes the series Ahsoka set after the fall of the Empire Ahsoka follows former Jedi Knight Ahsoka Tano as she investigates an emerging threat to a vulnerable galaxy so it doesn't really tell us anything about the character there we can see that this one is a number nine from the Ahsoka series and then we just have a little bit of a window there and of course there at the top just text there at the bottom. So all in all great packaging I think it looks really cool in there with that fantastic art. So next step let's open up the box and take a closer look at the figure inside. So now I have the figure out of the packaging pretty easy to remove so that's always nice so let's take a closer look at the details. So one of the first things that really grabs my attention both in the packaging and out is of course this really cool green painted accent over his upper torso and armor. So I think this is really cool. There are elements when I look really as close as my eyes can see where I am fairly certain it is a digital print but then on the shoulders I am doubting myself. I don't know if this is hand applied. I don't know within the Hasbro factories whether they actually ever do any hand painting on these figures but all in all it's really tidy and it does give a quite a cool dry brush effect of this really cool sort of dark teal green effect there on the upper armor. Very very cool. Another element that wasn't necessarily evident in the packaging was when we turn him to the side we can see that he has got this really cool sort of accenting to his hair. We've got a bit of a dark grey brownish wash that really gets in the grooves of the hair sculpting here that really just gives a little bit more depth and detail to his hair. We have a little bit of a sculpting line if I can get the camera to focus on it because it's a little bit minimal tiny little sculpting line across the top of the hair but generally I'm only going to see that if I'm looking up close. We can see it a little bit better on here but generally speaking from the front and from the side we don't really notice it too much. It's just a bit more noticeable across the top of the hair but I really do like that accenting paint there. I think it looks really cool and of course we have to talk about the likeness here. Some figures are very hit and miss with the sort of facial likeness to the actors. I think this one really does look like Ray Stevenson, the actor that portrayed Balin Skull in the first series, which I, he just, he was such a great character, great performance from the actor. I think it's really neat and a fitting tribute to the late Ray Stevenson to have such a really cool figure of his character there. So moving 
down, I can see we've got this really cool, it almost looks like a bug. Um, I don't know what the detail is closer up, but we've got this green accent over a silver buckle here on his belt. And I like that the leather belt has a gloss finish that really helps it stand out against the softer matte finish of the fabric well fabric on the original costume plastic here but this has got a lovely sort of matte finish and we can see the gloss of these leather straps so that's always really nice there really helps bring out those details when we get a little bit of difference in textures there so we've got a fair amount of sort of movement with the skirts we've got a panel one two uh, and one big one here in the back. So his skirt section to his tunic is separated into three sections. So this is going to be able to let us pose his legs with some freedom of movement, maybe not doing complete high kicks because this is plastic. We're not going to be able to bend it completely around at the upper thigh, but I like that we're going to be able to get some cool poses here. And there's just a lot of layers sort of sculpted in here, lots of fabric layers going all the way down to the bottom. We can sort of see the just the thicknesses of the fabrics. And there's even really like small sculpting of like the ridges to the front edge of his front tabards. If we can imagine these being just the front tabards here, we can see this edge and this edge. It's very, very small, but there is like a sort of a knotted edge to these front tabards, which I can definitely feel the texture of when I run my finger over. So I think that's really cool. You can see the definition of the tabard there on the front of this. I just, it's really cool sculpting. I really like it. It's got a good sort of fabric feel. And we can see that even though this is one piece in the back, we've got some deep grooves where the wide fabric have fall and created pleats and folds and creases there. It's really quite convincing. Sometimes I am a fan of soft goods, but sometimes they can hang in slightly odd ways. Fabric is a little bit unpredictable when you use it on such a small scale. And sometimes the plastic works better. And I think this is an element of where I think plastic works really well. Even the slit down here kind of hides in amongst the sculpting. I think it's really nice. Very cool. We've got some very cool armor here on the around the forearms here. Again, accented. We've got some tiny little buttons and details here on the top. Got some pretty good definition and that really cool sort of dry brush accenting color there. And we've got a little bit of that accented color down here on his boot armor. It's kind of, well, no, spats really over, the, over his boots. We can see the buckles here. And we've got that accenting down the front, which is very cool. So some really neat details, pretty standard pants underneath. Of course, they're not really designed to be seen, but there we go, really standard black pants. So let's, uh, oh, one other thing. He's got this um, very sort of Vader-esque sort of um, quilting on his sort of undershirt here, which is quite nice. We can see it on both sides um, and yeah. Oh, and of course those really cool buckles down the back of his tunic here. They were such a interesting feature of both Balin's and Shin Hati's costumes in the show. And it's really cool to see those tiny little details represented here as well. And we can see a little bit of that green effect here on the back as well. So all in all, I'm really happy with the details. You know, we've got tiny little buckles. Um, and we, of course, we've got a hook here um, on the side of his belt just sticking out um, because this is kind of um, original trilogy era. So of course, we do not have the on belt clips from the prequels. We have hooks. So before I get on to his articulation, I'm just going to pop him down and we're going to take a look at his lightsaber. So he has a really interesting lightsaber in the show. He sort of holds it like a big sword. He uses two hands and a very distinctive sort of fighting style. So I really like his lightsaber. We've got black and silver details. I think that's really fun. Like most modern Black Series figures, if I pull a little bit, it should come out. It's in there quite well, actually. Let's see. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, it should come out, but 
that's really in mine so maybe I won't pull that one out but yes if you pull that blade out if you wish there's that ring there that should let you hook it on his belt let's see like that so you can pose his lightsaber hanging down if you want but personally for me I just like having all of my force users with their lightsabers in their hand so it looks like quite a long blade he does have a longer than standard blade I have a few other uh, black series lightsabers that we'll compare later on but I just want to finish taking a closer look at Balin himself before we get on to some comparisons so one of the other things that I noticed while unboxing him is his shoulder bells kind of move very loosely so I am a little bit hesitant to put too much stress there looking up really close and I'm not sure that this will show on camera because it is a lot of black plastic it is just attached with one sort of peg going in under the tunic shoulder there so it only has this one point of attachment and I really don't want to wrench that out this one in particular is quite loose I was almost worried his arm was broken when I got him out of the box there for a minute um, but it's just this moving around over the top this one seems to be a little bit more stiffer and more sort of staying in place so I'm probably going to use his left arm here to uh, showcase some of his articulation here so I can see we've got a nice shoulder join here so we can put his arm up we've got not uh, he's got a sort of standard grip there for weapons with his fingers out so it's not too awkward of a pose if you want to put his arm up it's almost like he's gesturing while talking um, we've got a decent amount of rotation here with his hands so we've got lots of lots of maneuverability there um, and we've got he can sort of pivot around pretty standard stuff but I just like going through the range of mo movement just to see how well uh, the uh, costumes and designs will impact the point on his sh top of the shoulder belt just wants to nip under and I don't really want to wiggle this one too much and get it out in case I pop out that very small pin so we can still get a pretty good don't really want to stress test it up beyond that point but yeah that's not too hard to get all the way up there and it still looks reasonably okay with the shoulder armor like that but yeah I am gonna probably you know pose him with his arms more down by his sides but the movement is there we've got movement of both the neck and the head I can move I can move the neck around you can kind of see I've now got his sort of Adam's apple pointed to the side and his head moves very well very freely there so we can get all sorts of um, movement and poses there generally speaking I think he looks pretty cool with his head tilted just a little bit down because he is an imposing character I think that looks cool so of course we've we can see that we have some just sort of high waist movement here he's got a fairly thick torso so I wasn't expecting and particularly with this armor he wasn't going to have a sort of a mid chest uh, articulation there so we've got that at the waist it's fairly tight I can get to about here and he wants to snap back so not too much and he kind of just wants to go back to center it's not really gonna hold for a pose if I put him on a shelf like that lifting up we've got pretty standard at the uh, upper hips there we can put his legs all the way up we can go all the way out to the side if we really want to um, we can see with the knees that the fabric pants kind of comes down over the knees which I always like because it kind of hides that um, that seam uh, that these sort of joints here kind of hidden a little bit it's black on black it's a little hard to show maybe I can show it better from there but the uh that those pants come down so it does kind of hide that if you're drawing the the leg backwards which is nice and we can move that roll it around <laughs> pretty easily nice the actual knee joint clicking that back is quite stiff I had to really press on that one um go side to side and pretty standard ankle stuff here so all in all pretty standard posability he doesn't do a lot of sort of dynamic movement in the show he's he's the kind of um, 
more like a knight in armor in the way that he fights and moves, particularly with the way that he holds his lightsabers. He's not flipping around, he's not sort of crouching, so I feel like he doesn't really need too much posability, but it's pretty pretty good what he's got here. He's probably going to be able to do more poses with this figure than we ever see him in the show. So I think that that is a pretty cool figure. I think the likeness is good. It can be hard to make pretty much an all black costume look interesting, but with that accent color and the just the detail um, taken to the fabric components and the small number of armor pieces, I think they're all very, very cool. I think looking at the shins, they definitely look like a digital print down here, just, just to my eyes here. I'm sure somebody will be able to take a closer up photo to confirm that or not, um, but either way, it looks pretty good. So I guess, oh yes, one last detail. We can see his ring painted there on his finger. It's silver with a dot of green on the top. That's a really fun detail. No rings on this hand. So I'm going to try and see if I can get him in a little bit of a lightsaber pose. His hilt does look a little thinner than some other ones, so I'm hoping this will just slide through his fingers, maybe, without putting too much strain on those little pins. There we go. That wasn't too hard. And I dare say with a little bit of playing around, I could probably get him to hold the bottom with his other hand. But before I start doing that, I wanted to compare this saber with a couple of other uh, Black Series sabers and the figure in general, because he is a tall character and I want to see how well that is sort of represented in the Black Series figure, because I know height and body type can be quite important to collectors. Uh, the prime example that comes to mind is the Black Cassantin figure that was kind of a bit too skinny and a bit too short for the imposing Wookiee character from the Book of Boba Fett to the point where Hasbro even basically remade him a series sort of fixed that mistake. So I have read uh, by a few people that have had this one in hand that he is a little on the shorter side by himself. It's a little hard to get a sense of the scale. So let's take a closer look of the figure next to the Sabine figure from Ahsoka. You can see her there. And then for extra comparison, I've got possibly one of the largest Black Series figures in my collection to date. This is Darth Malgus. So of course he is supposed to be taller than normal. He is a very, very imposing character in the video game Star Wars The Old Republic. But we can kind of get a sense of, you know, what a very tall character is in the Black Series line. And Sabine is not a tall character. Um, and I feel that perhaps when these are all lined up, that perhaps he will look a little on the shorter side. I think the more telling uh, element will be when we get the Black Series Shin Hati figure, because they stand next to each other a lot in the show, and I think that that is really going to show the sort of the perspective and heights here. Sabine is supposed to be shorter than these, she looks shorter, but perhaps he could be just a little taller. But overall, I really like the sculpt of him. So talking about lightsabers, I'll start off with Malgus's here to compare to Balin's. So in the show, because they're not true Sith, they tend to have more orange toned blades. So I was curious to see whether that is reflected in the plastic used here for his lightsaber. So Malgus being a classic Sith, his is a true red in his source material. And comparing these two, I don't really see a difference in my eyes, in lighting here in my home, they look pretty much the same. Um, I don't really see, I wouldn't necessarily say that this is orange and this is red. If, if I look at just one, they both, they both look red to me. Um, so that's possibly a little bit of a, a fail there. It would have been fun to see that they are, you know, a, a completely different color to a standard Sith red. Malgus being a large character, we can see that his blade is technically longer than Balin's, but he does have those 
uh, bladed emitters on his lightsaber so that kind of makes up for some of it um, yeah and then of course the other comparison would be Sabine's lightsaber that she was given from Ezra that she has customized and she wields in the show so hers we can probably take to be more of a standard lightsaber within the Star Wars universe and we can see that Balin's lightsaber is uh, much longer than hers um, even even taking into account sort of where the hilts are it's, uh, we can see overall there's quite a difference in length there so I like that the length is long it seems on par for his character um, see if we sort of hold them up I feel like that is a, a fitting length um, but not exceedingly long we can see it is about the same length as Malgus's there but I just wish it was a little bit more orange for the character they definitely come across he in particular feels a lot more of sort of a not quite gray but definitely not fully dark side either so I like the fact that he had an orange lightsaber and this isn't really as orange like even if it was just like pumpkin orange I think that that would be slightly more I mean I wouldn't even call this you know blood red or anything it's just red um, so that is uh, a little bit of an unfortunate miss there for me in terms of the accessories I'm sure uh, you know enthusiastic fans because you can take the blades out of these might craft their own repaint it in some manner uh, it is a component that I guess is ripe for customization if that really bugs you overall I really like the sculpting of it it immediately uh, looks like Balin's skull to me I think just all the details are really there it's a little shame he is perhaps just a little bit shorter than his character who always looks so tall and imposing in the show but I'm really happy with the detail of the face and the hair and this really cool weathering on his outfit here so there you have it that is the Black Series 6 inch scale Balin Skull from the live action Ahsoka series from Disney Plus with a few others here for some brief comparisons let me know in the comments down below what you think about the new Balin Skull figure and whether you will be picking this one up to add to your collection I really like him I think he's really cool and I can't wait to finally track down a Shin Hati to stand next to him thank you so much for watching my unboxing video do check out other videos for more Star Wars unboxings and adventures catch you in the next video and as always may the force be with you if you enjoyed this video go ahead and give it a like check out our other videos and subscribe for alerts about new uploads thanks for watching and may the force be with you.